my dear brethren, let us read today from the first book of Samuel, chapter 15. The first book of Samuel, 15, verse 13. First book of Samuel, 15, chapter 15, and verse 13. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak on. So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord unknown to you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? <clears throat> and Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me, and brought back Agag king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took of the plunder sheep and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God and Gilgal. So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, Saul seized the edge of his robe, and it tore. So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today, and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. <laughs> and also the strength of Israel will not lie nor relent, for he is not a man that he should relent. Amen. Saul, a chosen of God, that is, God has chosen him. And not only he chose him so that he may be his servant, but he chose him and made him also king over Israel. He honored him. He gave him a mission. He gave him a work. He gave him a people. And he also gave him commands. And straight from the beginning, my dear brethren, we will mention here that whatever God gives you, the gifts and His callings are unrelenting. They, he, God does not relent, but not without a reason. And the only reason that God can take back all the things that He has given us is if we are not careful, if we are not very careful to the word of God so that we may obey it. There's no other reason. This is the only reason. Everything else, God will do. 
but God asks from us this thing that we can do and which God commands through his word that we be careful, that we study it, so that we may do it. So that the election of the Lord may be with greater and greater blessings and all the more glorious this presence of God in our life. In the Old Testament, the Old Testament is the divinely inspired book. God has written it by the Holy Spirit so that it may be for our teaching, for our rebuke, and also so that we may return. Saul was a chosen man of God. God chose him. God distinguished him. God blessed him and exalted him. God glorified him. He did many times, ta- God thing- did many things in the life of Saul. He made him king, and now he wants his obedience and doing and executing not the will of of man, his own will, but the will of God. What we must pay attention to today, all day long, my dear brethren, is when God blesses you, he blesses you because he wants something from you for his own glory. He does not bless you so that you may be blessed. He blesses you so that God may be glorified in your life and afterward that you may be blessed. Saul enjoyed God's blessings, but the message today is he did not take the word of God seriously. He mingled it. He mingled the word of God with his own thoughts and desires, but also with the thoughts of the people and of other people and their desires. The first time Samuel told him, go to Gilgal and I will come so we can offer sacrifice in seven days. And there in Gilgal, the enemy began began to assemble, the Philistines. The people began to fear and dissolve. And to the word and the promise of God through Samuel, Saul mingled his fear. And he thought and said, They have come, and our enemies are increasingly multiplying. My people are dissolving, the people of Israel. They're scattering from me. And I won't make it in time to pray. So he gave up the sacrifice, he who was not appointed to do so. I repeat this. He did not take the word of God into serious account. The result being that God cannot take him into serious account until the end. He cannot trust him. Afterward, God visited him again with Samuel and told him, Go to the Amalekites, who are those who sin against me. I will give you strength to them so that they may may destroy them. You will leave nothing alive, not of men, nor of sheep, nor of oxen, nothing nor of any animal, nor belongings. You will destroy everything, he said. They are the head of the nations. Amalek was the grandson of Esau. He is the example of the carnal mind. And God told him, destroy it all. And for us, all the things of the flesh you must destroy. Indeed, with great authority, because when God says something, He gives power to man so that he may be able to do so. He doesn't tell him, go, and if you can, do it. Go, and you will be able, because I'll be with you. So he went. He overcame Amalek. But he spared the king Agag. He spared the best of the sheep, of the oxen, and all animals. He spared all the good things of Amalek. And what was despised and useless, he destroyed. He had not taken the word of God into serious account. He judged it. He thought of it. He said, it can't be so. 
It can't be the way that God says. And if we don't do it exactly as God says, so what? doesn't matter. But God is not pleased. And this man of God who thinks this way is useless to God. He's not useful to him. He's not useful and that's why he takes him out of the way so that he may find somebody else who will be according to his heart so that he may do all of God's will, good, uh, big and small. And God visited Samuel at night and he told him, I have relented that I made him king because he turned from behind me and he did not execute my words. Samuel mourned but he knew that God is not a man to relent. He found a reason and he rejected him. He approached Saul and Saul rejoicing. He said, I did the will of God. He hadn't, I'll say this continuously today. He hadn't taken the word of God into serious account. I did the will of God, he said. He said this with confidence because he did what he thought was the will of God. That is why he was sure of it. That he did the will of God. And Samuel told him, And what is this bleating that I hear? And this noise from the animals? Oh, this, I brought it from the Amalekites. It's the best. The people told me to do so. And I thought it was right. Wouldn't it be better such good animals to sacrifice them to the Lord. You see that his thoughts has some logic. But the critical point is not whether something seems logical to us. The critical point is if we are careful to the things that God says. And we especially in the New Testament the things that are written in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Logical thought. Instead of me destroying them, Lord, I'll just sacrifice them to God, humanly. But for that reason, the Word of God says that the righteousness of man is like a filthy garment. What what he did wasn't so serious. Come on. For God, it was very serious, though. It is very serious. Any transgression and iniquity is serious in the eyes of God. Because all iniquity is sin. All injustice in man is very serious. And our fellow countrymen and our all injustice is sin. And God cannot cooperate with sinners. And Samuel told him what we must also know. What do you think? That God likes burnt sacrifices or that we obey his voice? Does he enjoy prayers? Does he like prayers? All night prayers and fastings? Well, doesn't God like these things? Yes. As long as beforehand there is obedience to the word of God and submission to the word of God. Otherwise, all these things are useless. Useless. They have no meaning, no result. All these things have no repayment from God. And the characteristics, I believe, as God has given them to me, and I want us all to pay attention very carefully, of the useless Christian who has no future in the presence of God, is that he loves without labor and sacrifice, without work and truth. I love you. I love you emotionally. But I do not labor and I do not sacrifice. And I don't have work in truth and my love has no work in truth. He believes in God and Christ and the gospel. But without him having work of obedience in the work and the, the word of God like Saul. So he's useless. He has hope in God. Not only he believes, but he hopes in God as well. But without having patience and without offering true worship in the Holy Spirit and in truth. You cannot hope in God and just sleep. 
I hope and I strive. I hope and I worship God. I offer sacrifices to God that are true in the spirit and in truth. And he cannot have true worship in God unless there is fear of God. I worship God, but I don't fear him and I do whatever I want. Worship without fear of God and without repentance. Useless Christian. And repentance without confession and without returning to God. All these things are Saul's. Everything. He loves Samuel. He loves God. But not in work and in truth. Not with obedience. He believes in God. But he doesn't submit to his word. He worships God but he doesn't fear him. His sin is revealed to him, but he doesn't repent to God. He says, forgive me, Samuel, because I sinned. He didn't go to God to weep, to say, I sinned against you, Lord. And his repentance has no returning in it. He's a useless Christian. Completely useless. And I want to repeat it once again, what the characteristics of a Christian are that God pushes him aside. He doesn't need him. He's not useful to him. He's harmful to him. He loves but with work and word and tongue and not with work and truth. He believes but without having work of obedience and the work of God. He hopes but without striving, without having patience and worshiping God. He worships God but without fear of God and without repentance. And he repents, but without returning to God. This is the Christian whose future is rejection. God rejects him. And it down indeed without chance of relenting from God. Without any chance of God relenting from this. And all the secret is that this man has not understood how seriously he must take the word of God in his life. He hasn't understood that the word of God is the beginning and the end. It's the Alpha and the Omega. The word of God is the one who is, who was, and is to come. The word of God is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. The word of God is God himself and everlasting life itself. He has not understood that with God you cannot play. God cannot be mocked. Whatever man sows... That is what he will reap. If he sows in his mind according to the flesh, he will reap corruption. If he sows according to the word of the Lord and the Spirit, then he will reap everlasting life. Saul is finished. He will remain king for another 25 years, 30 in total. But he is done. And he is finished completely. What follows is that the Holy Spirit that God gave him, made him a new man, will leave him and the spirit of wickedness will visit him that will trouble him. He'll become an enemy of God and an enemy of of the man of God. And in the end, he will destroy himself and all his family and he will bring into a very difficult position the people of God as well how much good can a man do who sows in the spirit and so much how much destruction can a man bring bring who sows in the flesh unless he repents from the heart and returns to God 
because God doesn't want the death of the sinner, but he wants his repentance, his return, so that he may give him everlasting life. For that reason, our Lord Jesus Christ, as we come to an end here, he says, be careful, keep watch, and pray so that you do not enter to temptation. And so that you may be able to escape all these things that are going to happen. I repeat, be careful. Keep watch and pray. So that he who tempts does not root prevail over you like Saul was uh, won over as he spared the good oxen and the lambs supposedly to offer it up to the Lord as a sacrifice. But even if it were so, even if it were the truth, even if he wanted to offer it to the Lord with all his heart, he didn't, it just didn't stop it from being a sin in transgression, which will bring him out of the plan of God, out of the blessing of God. It will lead him to hell in the end, my brethren, and to eternal perdition without a chance of return. So be careful. Keep watch and pray, Jesus Christ cries out to all of us, so that you may be able to escape all these things that are going to happen. Amen.